Well, hello there. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to set up a basic terrestrial enclosure for beginner tarantula species I recommended in my previous video. If you haven't seen the video, click here, somewhere, here. This is simple terrestrial enclosure. It got hiding place and water dish. And that is basically all tarantulas need. Now, hiding place like this, this cork bark can be a bit expensive or harder to get. Then you can use coconut shells, same thing. Or some people even use plastic pots for house plants. You just cut it in half and place it on substrate and that's basically it. And you have perfect hide and your tarantula will be happy. Size of the enclosure is where most beginners make mistake. Tarantulas don't need big enclosures. They will spend most of the time in their hide or at hide entrance waiting for a prey to approach. So with bigger enclosure you will only have harder time with feeding. General formula for width is double the size of tarantula's leg span and for the height between top of the substrate and top lid should not be greater than one and a half of tarantula's leg span. You don't need to follow it exactly but to give you a basic idea. The reason why you need to avoid tall enclosures is because terrestrial tarantulas are bad climbers so they can fall and rapture their abdomen and then they die. But it is a good thing that even if you got tall enclosure you can always add more substrate, so the difference between top, top of the substrate and top lid is not greater than one and a half or something like that. In case you want or already got a sling, sling is small and sexed tarantula, you can house them in wilds like this one. Here I keep uh, slings up to three centimeters of leg span and here I keep slings up to five centimeters of leg span. But these are kind of bad because they are made out of glass and you can't drill the holes on sides for cross ventilation. And cross ventilation is important because it prevents mold and stuff. But more on that on, in the next video. And for tarantulas between 5 and 10 centimeters, I use CD enclosures. If you want to make one by yourself, click here for video to see how. For substrate, I recommend you to start with cocoa fiber. It comes in bricks like this. Usually it comes in bricks like this. Sometimes it is in a bag, but usually it is in dry bricks. So you need to add water to hydrate it and then it grows. Here is a video how to hydrate a cocoa fiber brick. So click here if you want to see that. Most keepers got some type of substrate they prefer. So later you can find something else if you won't be pleased with plain cocoa fiber. For example, I use mixture of cocoa fiber and potting soil, 50-50. Few other tips, avoid mesh top lids. There are two things that can go wrong with it. Tarantula can chew through it and escape. Well, not really chew, they, they pull the strings with fangs until the strings eventually break and then just squeeze through them. It doesn't happen often and some people kept tarantulas with mesh top lids for years and nothing happened but it's not worth the risk. Also they can get their legs stuck in the mesh and it will leave them hanging and eventually falling and you don't want that. They can even lose their leg like that. Also before putting tarantula in the enclosure check the hole size because tarantulas can squeeze through really small holes so make sure that ventilation holes aren't bigger than tarantula carapace because if it is, then they can fit through it easily. Don't underestimate them, because I did once and yeah. And one last thing, don't use big enclosures. I think I was clear on that, right? And that's it for today's video. Next one will be about basic maintenance, feeding, temperature and humidity. Until then, subscribe to my channel and I will see you again soon. Bye.